Welcome back everybody, MC here with another video and today I want to show you guys how to get the Zenit. The Zenit is one of the most powerful weapons in Terraria and you get it post Moonlord. It's going to take a little bit of grinding to get but it's not that difficult if you break it up into parts. So that's what we're going to do here in this video. So first of all you need to get the Terra Blade which requires a recipe that I'm going to show you in this video and then you need to get the Meow Mirror which you get from Moonlord, Star Raid from Moonlord. You have to get the Waver from the Martian Madness Saucers. You have to get the Horseman's Blade, which you get from Pumpkin Moon. You get the Seedler from Plantera. You get the Star Fury from the Floating Islands. You get the Beekeeper from the Queen Bee. You get the Enchanted Sword from the Enchanted Shrines and you get the Copper Sword from either making it with Copper or you start off with the item at the beginning of the game. To make this you need to go to the Mithril Anvil or the equivalent and as I said already the Zenit does a hell of a lot of damage and a lot of critical strike damage as well. And to make it you need the Terra Blade, the Meow Mirror, the Star Rat, the Influx Waver, the Horseman's Blade, the Seedler. Star Fury, Beekeeper, Enchanted Sword, and Copper Short Sword. To make the Knight's Edge, which you turn into the true Knight's Edge, you're going to need several items. The Volcano, which you make from Hellstone, the Lightsbane, which you make from Demonite Bars, or you can use, if you're in a Crimson World, the Blood Butcherer, which you use from Crimtain Bars, and we have the Blade of Grass as well, which has a bit of a recipe that I'll have to show you later on in this video. And you also have the Muramasa, which you find in the dungeon. So those are the items that you use to create the Knight's Edge. So then you get the Knight's Edge and you use that with the souls that you get from the mechanical bosses to make the true Knight's Edge. And through Excalibur with the Broken Hero Sword, and the True Knight's Edge in order to make the Terror Blade. I'm going to show you how to get all of these individually as we go. I just want to show you the finished goods bit by bit as we go. So there's the Terror Blade there. So we're going to go over how to get each of the swords. And the first ones I'm going to show you are the easier ones from Moonlord. You're going to have to kill Moonlord a few times in order to get the drops. So you have to be patient, but you're going to get the Meow Mirror and the Star Rat from Moon Lord, and obviously, as I just said, farm him a little bit and you'll be able to get the swords. It does take a while. Then to get the Horseman's Blade, you're going to have to take out pumpkins in the Pumpkin Moon. And as you can see, we just got the Horseman drop there. For the Influx Waver, you need to kill Martian Saucers from the Martian event. And it isn't a guaranteed drop, so you might have to farm for them a little bit. Seedler, you're going to have to kill Plantera and Plantera is going to drop it very commonly, but not 100% of the time. So you're going to have to fight her a few times. And as we go in this video, we're going to be going through the other swords and other items that we're going to need for the Zenit. So I'm going to kind of get into each of them in turn as we go. For the next item, you have to get the Beekeeper, which you get from killing Queen Bee, which is quite easy, especially if you do it later on in the game, or if you keep the one that you get from Queen Bee from earlier. And you get the Star Fury from going into the Floating Islands. It's a pretty much a guaranteed drop in every world, so you shouldn't have any trouble getting that. And it's just going to take you a bit of time to find it. And obviously, you want to keep it when you do. You could obviously find it later on in the game too if you like. For the next item, you are going to need to get the Enchanted Shrine. The Enchanted Shrine is not guaranteed to have the Enchanted Sword, but if it does, you will be able to farm the Enchanted Sword a little bit easier. Otherwise, you're going to need to get gold crates from fishing, which can be a bit of a pain. So you're probably better off world hopping to get the Enchanted Sword if your world doesn't have it and for the next item you're going to need a lot of different things so we have a lot to unpack here you need the <laughs> you need the terror blade itself you need the true knight's edge the true excalibur and the broken hero sword now i'm going to show you how to get each of these items individually 
And the first one we're going to show you is how to get the true Excalibur. So the true Excalibur, you're going to need to kill the destroyer for and use the treasure bag from the destroyer in order to get hallowed bars. Hallowed bars are going to be necessary to make the normal Excalibur. And we're going to make the normal Excalibur, but we're going to have to mix this with Chlorophyte. Now you're going to need Chlorophyte for a few of these. So go to the jungle to get Chlorophyte. It's an ore and you're going to get that later on in the game anyway. I'm pretty sure you're guaranteed to get Chlorophyte at some point regardless. But I just wanted to show you where to get it in the jungle. As I said, you're going to need Chlorophyte for a few of these recipes as we go especially if you have tin in your world and then you make the Excalibur you turn the Excalibur into the true Excalibur by mixing it with Chlorophyte and the true Excalibur is one of our first major items that we're going to need to make the Zenit to make the Terra Blade which makes the Zenit next thing you're going to want to do, I'm just going to show you that you need to kill the twins and the destroyer and the and Skeletron Prime in order to get their goodie bags to get all of the souls from those three bosses in order to make the next weapon. And of course, I'm going to show you the fights themselves, not the whole fight, of course. I'm just going to show you how to spawn them. Fright, Sight and Might is what you need. And you need to mix those in order to make the true Knight's Edge. You mix the Knight's Edge with these three to make that item. So the true Knight's Edge then, of course, is one step further towards the Terra Blade. And the Terra Blade, one step further towards the Zenit. It's not convoluted at all. You need to kill, of course, the mechanical mob bosses in order to get the Hallowed Bars and to get the Sight, Might, and Fright souls. And it's always good to kill these bosses anyway, just to make other items in the game. So it's not just for the Senate, but you, if you're strong enough later on in the game, you can just kill all three of them at once, like I'm doing here, in order to get them to drop all their items at once. So you don't have to farm them separately. Just fight them at nighttime. I'm pretty sure every person in here has to fight the mechanical bosses anyway in order to finish the game. So you shouldn't have any problem finding out how to summon those and to farm those as well. The next thing we are going to be doing is getting the Broken Hero Sword, which is the last ingredient we need for the Terra Blade itself. And the Broken Hero Sword is dropped by Mothron during the Solar Eclipse. And as you can see it on the ground here, you used to need three of these in order to make the Terra Blade. Good thing they changed it so that we don't have, we only need one now and it's a little bit easier to actually get it now as well because sometimes you'd get solar eclipses and then only drop two now i'm going to show you guys how to make the knight's edge to get the knight's edge you need crimtain bars first in order to make the blood butcherer you'll get the opposite type of bar in a corrupted world so you don't have to do anything special for that you turn the crimtain bars into the blood butcherer and that is the first ingredient towards the Knight's Edge. It's the light spain you'll be making if you are in a corruption world. In order to get these ores, you need to kill Eye of Cthulhu. It's probably a little bit unnecessary for me to show you this, but I'm going to kill him really quickly. And we're going to get the bars or the ore itself that we turn into the bars from his goodie bag. Or he's going to drop it in a classic world, of course. The next item that we're going to be getting is the Muramasa. Muramasa can be found in the dungeon. It's in a locked golden chest to get the key. I'd recommend waiting and killing the slimes. They're guaranteed to drop the key. You use the key to get the Muramasa. I've already opened all of the chests in this dungeon, of course. So I'm just doing it really quickly the way I would have done it in a normal playthrough, even though I already technically have the Muramasa in this playthrough. So you go to your golden chest, you open it up, the Muramasa is going to be there. And that's one more item for the Knight's Edge. The next one you're going to be getting is the Volcano. You need Hellstone for that and get your Obsidian Skin Potion ready. We're going to Hell and we're going to get some Hellstone Ore. And we're also going to mix that with some Obsidian. Now, I did tell you that the Knight's Edge is the most convoluted out of all of the swords to actually make, but it's not that difficult if you break it down. 
just got to be patient, give yourself time to find all of these items. And the Knight's Edge is not going to be very useful on its own, so you probably will only be making it for the Zenith. And if you're not going to be using the Terror Blade in your normal playthroughs, you won't need it for anything else, as I say. You're probably going to be flying through this at the end game to just catch up on the items that you didn't already make. So now we're going to make our Hellstone Bars, which are very easy to get. And then we're going to turn that into the Volcano. It's the last sword that is going to be a little bit more convoluted, but it's very easy as well. Everything's in the same place. There's no bosses necessary for the next one. So there's the Volcano as well. The next item we're going to make is the Blade of Grass, and we need to go to the jungle for the Blade of Grass. And the Blade of Grass needs three ingredients from the jungle, and that is Jungle Spores, which I'm going to show you first. There are these little glowing things that you probably passed on your playthroughs all of this time. I didn't realize how important they are. Make sure you don't leave these. They're used in multiple recipes across Terraria. Pick those up. And you also need Vine and you need Stinger. Stinger you're going to get from the various wasps and flying enemies in the jungle. They're pretty easy to get, so just keep killing them and they'll eventually drop them. And Vine you get from the wall creepers, the ones that stick their heads out and are, they actually look like vines. Yeah, just get the man eater and get your vine. And then we're going to bring our ingredients back to base and create the blade of grass. And that should be stingers, jungle spores, and vines. We're going to put them together and make a blade of grass. It looks like we have all the ingredients necessary to make the next sword. So we're going to go to the crimson or the corruption, and we're going to look for an altar. Most people forget that you need to use an altar for this. And we're going to make the knight's edge from our ingredients. And there we go. We have the Knight's Edge. The next thing I'm going to show you how to do is to make the Chlorophyte Extractinator. This is only necessary under two circumstances, but I'm going to show you how to make it first. The Chlorophyte Extractinator is pretty much the Extractinator which you find around the world. It's very easy to find. And you mix that with Chlorophyte Bars. This is only necessary if you threw away your Copper Short Sword that you had earlier in the game and need a new one and your world only has tin in it. So if you need tin, or if you need copper, I should say, you go find tin, which is going to be pretty much just underneath your base. A lot of people forget where the very basic ores are once they reach late game. So I'm just going to show you real quick. You get your tin, and then you make those into tin bars at the forge, and then you have to put those into your new chlorophyte extractinator, and it turns them into copper bars. The chlorophyte extractinator is very handy for other things as well, but for now, we're just going to focus on the tin to copper. And that's going to allow me to make the copper short sword. And the copper short sword is the last thing I need in order to make the zenith. So don't make the broadsword by accident. You need the short sword. I always wondered why it's the short sword and not the broadsword, because it's the only one that doesn't overhead swing. But anyway, and if you put all of these together, the true knight's edge has been created. The Terror Blade has been created. The Zenit has been created. And after all of that hard work, you have one of the most difficult weapons to make and strongest weapons in the game. And you made it look easy. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you again in the next video. Let me know what you think of this one. And if you have any questions, ask. Ta-ta!